I'm virtually certain I've talked about this subject before, though I can't find information on that, and that's probably because I've made various changes as I've sort of evolved through the process of making my videos. That having been said, I wanted to approach it, this from a slightly different angle in any case. I want to do something I've done before when talking about self-sacrifice, I think, and give examples of exactly what I mean when it comes to the subject at hand. Hello and welcome to the Daily Summation from Kurt's Religion and Politics. I'm your host, I'm Kurt. Today is Friday, the 5th of February, 2021, end of the weekday coming, uh, work week coming up for lots of people. And I'm sure a lot of people are going to be happy to see their weekend coming along. Uh, I wanted to welcome everybody who's coming on on Rumble, on the podcast, on YouTube. Thank you for being there for me, particularly those of you who are on Rumble. As I say, you've been doing tremendous things for me, even though a lot of people wouldn't look at them as all that important. I wanted to talk today about the subject of benevolent selfishness, and I wanted actually to do that from an exemplary way, from in terms of examples. So... One of the things that I see a lot of younger people saying is, I'm not going to have kids, I'm not going to raise kids, I'm not qualified for that, I don't want to do that. An example of benevolent selfishness is actually having and raising children. And the reason for that is because even if you don't have children who take care of you when you're older, which lots of times, even though it's a much lesser level today than it was in times past, you do. They decide what home you go into or whatever, right? Uh, but even if you don't have that, having people out there who know how to do things, who know how to build things, who know how to write software, who know how to uh, practice law, who know how to do a uh, doctor work, whatever it happens to be, having people who know how to do that thing counts on there being people out there who can do that sort of thing. If you have and raise children and you do so from a perspective of benevolent selfishness, what you're actually doing is making it possible for those people to move on to having some sort of meaningful life that will be meaningful for you as well as for them. Mentoring others is another thing that I want to bring up. Um, when you have people around you, regardless who they are, regardless the scenario, when you have people around you and you take the time to sit with them, talk with them, walk with them, deal with them, tell them that you've been on, in the same places that they've been when you have. Obviously not lie, right? But to tell them when, when they say, yeah, I work in a gas station, say, yeah, I worked in a gas station years ago. Know, know how that is. I'm not saying I know perfectly what you're going through. But anyway, the point is mentoring is another example of benevolent selfishness. Because what happens is there's, there's two things that I tend to do, for example, right? When I'm dealing with, for example, people who are out working somewhere, I have a, a friend who works in a deli, right? He works in a restaurant, which is basically a deli, claims to be a deli. It's really not what the traditional sense of a deli is, but nonetheless, that's what it claims to be. And he is basically managing the, the place, at least in a shift type of a capacity. And I've told him now numerous times, dude, you need to get off, get up off your butt and find something better to do with your time. You're better than this. Am I saying being a deli manager is a bad thing? No, not at all. But I am saying that I want for this guy to rise to his level of ability in things that he has ability in. Maybe he'll stay as a manager of that deli, and I'm not going to say that he doesn't do a great job of doing just that. He does. He does a great job of it. That's part of the point. In my mind, my mentoring him, my getting him to think about doing and being other things is what will hopefully move him in the direction of changing what he's doing. And again, you ask why? Well, because I want people who do those things so that when I'm looking for the thing, the services, the goods, whatever it is that I happen to be searching for, somebody like that, who I know will do well, will be out there doing those things. The same thing imply, applies, obviously, to the idea of impromptu training or training of any kind, frankly, that you can give anybody. I worked for a while at a major uh, hardware slash software company, and I'm not going to name names. But while I was working there, I was working as what they called a level two software developer. I had my boss come up to me one day and say, yeah, our company loves people like you. And I asked, oh, yeah, really? Why? And he said, well, because you work as a level two, but you actually do the work of level three. Well, what did he mean by that? I sat down and talked with the people around me, some of them not involved in any project I had anything to do with. And I said, um, 
yeah, if you learn this, if you can do that, if you figure out this, if you understand this, look, see, you can do this. Uh, I gave those people nuggets of information that they could use to improve what they were able to do. And again, uh, you may think, well, aren't you sort of undercutting yourself by doing that? But let me explain something to you that I've pointed out before. I don't know that I've done it in my videos, but look, I've spent the last, you know, 20 years or whatever, really more than that, learning how to do software development. If you honestly think I could impart my wisdom for five years, for two hours a day, and give you everything I know, you need to know that you're sadly mistaken. For me to give somebody a tidbit here and there, that barely even qualifies as, as risk, right? Now, to be fair, some of those people can and probably will surpass me in the course of time in their ability if they haven't done so already. But the point is they would have done that anyway, and I've helped them to get on the right track in doing that. And like I say, when I go, when it's time for me to retire, there will be people out there still doing that sort of thing when I'm gone, and hopefully I will have helped to make them better people. It's a Important consideration, too, that one of the things that's really an act of benevolent selfishness is to help people who are in need. So I walked out of my house a week ago. I don't know. I'm not sure exactly, but it wasn't very long ago. It was less than two weeks, I'm pretty sure. And there was a guy outside my house. In fact, I drove up to my house now that I think about it. I didn't even get a chance to get into my house to walk out of it. I drove up to my house, and there was a guy in a car parked behind one of my vehicles. And uh, he came up to me and he said, uh, hey, you know, I need a jump. And I said, cool, no problem. And I turned around and I set myself up, asked him where his battery was, set myself to jump his vehicle. I jumped his vehicle and uh, he wanted to give me something for my trouble. And he ended up giving me a buck, I guess. Nothing special, nothing amazing. And in fact, I kind of wanted to refuse completely. He wouldn't let me. He gave me that. I'm okay with that. I'm I'm not upset at him or anything. I just feel like, yet again, this is one of those cases where selfish, uh, benevolent selfishness says, let the guy keep everything he has because he probably needs it, right? And I don't at this point. I'm rather fortunate in that regard. But he asked me, you know, he said, well, you know, thank you. And I said, you know, my only thing to you is when you see somebody who needs a jump and you're able to do that, give them one. Give them a jump. And he said, aha, pay it forward. Well, that's benevolent selfishness, in my opinion. Now, at the same time, there are a lot of people out there who, whether they realize it or not, are trying to get over. That is, they're, they want people to give them stuff when they don't need it. Uh, they want to be treated like uh, wonderful human beings when, you know, and, and, and given things, again, that they don't need or, or that they're not willing to work to get, Right. And in my mind, part of benevolent selfishness is not helping those people any more than you absolutely must. When I say absolutely must, I mean you want to help them stay alive, you want to help them not be horribly miserable, but at the same time, it doesn't really hurt for them to be miserable because by doing that, by having them be miserable, you actually incentivize them to go out and go to work. That's part of what you do when you do that. So this is one of the things that I consider benevolent selfishness as well. When I have people come up to me and ask me for money and the person is well-dressed or has a cigarette hanging out of their mouth, uh, when they're wearing more jewelry than I am, when they're driving a nice car and they're asking for money for gas, my answer to that person typically, I hate to say this, is go whistle. When I have somebody who comes up to me in rags and asks me for money, uh, I'm more likely to say, can I get you some food, than I am to give them money, right? Um, if I can do it, I'll put them into better circumstances. Can I, is there something we can do to get you into a better place where you're working and so forth? So these are sort of some of the kinds of uh, examples of things that I consider to be benevolent selfishness. You know, having and raising kids, helping other people when they have problems with their kids, educating people where you're able to do so. Um, getting, you know, going through impromptu training with people, mentoring people when you're able to do that, uh, helping people in need as a general thing, not helping those who are, uh, who are abusing the request for help, right? These are things that I consider to be benevolent selfishness. 
And with that said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up my video today. Again, today is February the 5th of 2021, and it is Friday. I'm glad to have had you along today. Thank you for sitting through the entire video. I know I can be insufferably long-winded and somewhat of a motor mouth when I get going. Uh, but again, thank you very much for sitting through my video. Uh, thank you again if you're coming to me on YouTube, if you're coming on the podcast, and most especially if you're coming to me through Rumble, where, as I say, I sort of get, quote, the most play. I uh, hope you're having a good Friday. hope that your weekend ends up being a good one and that you get the chance and the opportunity and so forth to enjoy yourself and your time with your family and friends. Uh, as usual, I hope that, uh, you know, everything is going well for you as a general thing, and hopefully we will see you again tomorrow. The speaker on this edition of the Daily Summation is Kurt Schubert. This video is recorded on Friday, the 5th of February, 2021. The Daily Summation is created for Kurt's Religion and Politics. Thanks for watching this edition of the Daily Summation from Kurt's Religion and Politics. I hope you found it entertaining or instructional, or maybe both. Uh, if you want to see more from me, you can go to blogs.kpshubert.com. That's blogs.kpshubert.com. I am on Twitter, Parlor, and Minds.com. My handle on each of those is at kpshubert. That's at kpshubert. I have a Rumble and a YouTube channel. They are the Kurt's Re Religion and Politics channels on Rumble and YouTube. I have a Facebook page. The Facebook page is Kurt's Religion and Politics as well. I have I am on Patreon. If you want to support me, that's one of the better places you can do that. And you will find me at Kurt's Religion and Politics on Patreon. I have a podcast. The podcast is podcasts with, a, with an S dot kpshubert dot com. That's podcasts dot kpshubert dot com. I think you should be able to find me with relative ease on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify as well. The best way I find to do that is to look for Kurt's Religion and Politics. You can try to use the Daily Summation. I find that it doesn't work as well as a general rule, but you can always try that. I'm glad to have you aboard today, and hopefully we will see you again tomorrow.